An old banker was worriedly walking up and down in his study room, anxiously remembering how he had hosted a party 15 years ago. In that party, there were many clever men who discussed over many interesting topics, many interesting issues. He remembered that they were arguing about capital punishment. There were many journalists and intellectual men who disapproved death penalty. They considered death penalty as outdated, immoral and unsuitable for Christian society. There had been a hot debate that autumn night about whether that sentence was better or life imprisonment. According to the rich young banker, that penalty was more moral and more humane than imprisonment for life because capital punishment or that penalty uh, kills a man at once, but life imprisonment kills a person slowly. But a young lawyer of 25 years disagreed, saying that while both death penalty and life imprisonment are immoral, equally immoral, because only God had the right to decide who lives and who dies or even avenge someone, he felt that life imprisonment was better because to live is better than not live at all. They were so carried away by the discussion that the banker shouted, I can bet two millions that you would not stay in solitary confinement even for five years. The lawyer too was so carried away by this discussion and he accepted the bet and said that, in fact, I would not stay just five years, but I would stay 15 years. They both put their freedom and money at stake and the wild senseless bet was carried out. They were both young and carefree. The banker now, after 15 years, was an old man and anxiously tried to remember what was the object of that bet. What good came out of that man losing 15 years and him throwing away two millions? Does it prove that that penalty was better or worse than life imprisonment? No. It was nonsensical and meaningless. He recalled how the young lawyer went into voluntary solitary confinement from 12 o'clock of November 14, 1870 to 12 o'clock of November 14, 1885. He would not be allowed to see or hear any human being nor receive letters or newspapers and would spend 15 years under strict supervision in the banker's garden. He was allowed to have a musical instrument, book supplies, write letters, drink wine and smoke. There was a single small window where he received the things that he wanted by writing an order. The slightest attempt to violate these conditions would release the beggar from paying two millions. In the first year, he suffered from severe loneliness and depression. He played the piano continuously night and day. He refused to drink wine and tobacco because wine excites desires and desires are the worst enemies of prisoners and tobacco. Tobacco spoils the air of the room. He read novels of complicated love plot, sensational and fantastic stories. In the second year, the piano was silent. He only read a lot of books. By the fifth year, music could be heard again. He also asked for wine, and by this time, he did nothing but eat, drink, and sleep. He would yawn angrily and talk to himself. He would write for hours and in the morning, tear up everything he had written and cry. By the end of the sixth year, the prisoner started to get into in-depth study in language, philosophy, and history. For four years, he thoroughly studied language, philosophy, and history. Then, after that, he sent a letter to the captor, the banker, saying that he had written some lines in six different languages and asked him to show them to people who knew the languages to check and also requested that if there was no mistake found, then a shot to be fired in the garden so that he would know that his efforts to learn languages these four years have not been wasted or gone in vain. As the prisoner waited anxiously in the dark room, the banker ordered two shots to be fired in the garden. After the tenth year, the prisoner sat motionless at his table reading nothing but the Bible, the Gospel. As his 15 years were coming to an end, he read different kind of books without discrimination. 
religion, science, history, literature, philosophy, novels, medicine, his way of reading books created an imagery or suggested a feeling that seemed like a man who is swimming among the wreckages of his ship and greedily trying to grab hold of one thing and then the other to save himself from drowning. This way the prisoner passed his 15 years time and when this 15 years of being a prisoner was about to come to an end, the banker was regretting and thinking that tomorrow at 12 o'clock he would regain his freedom. And if I pay him 2 millions, I would be ruined. 15 years ago, the banker was rich, young and proud and 2 millions meant not much. But now he was old and not that successful. He even wished that the man had died before 15 years ended. When the prisoner, when the lawyer wins the bet and comes out of his solitary confinement, he would be just 40 years old and the banker imagined that this prisoner would get married and live a happy life with his two millions. While on the other hand, the banker himself would be bankrupt and ashamed. The only way to save himself from bankruptcy and shame was to kill the prisoner. It was cold, dark, and raining heavily. He took the key and made his way through the darkness into the room. The candle was still burning and the prisoner sat still beside the table. Five minutes passed and the prisoner did not move at all. He was skin and bones, pale and long-haired with shaggy beard. No one would believe that he was just 40 years old. The banker thought it would not be hard to kill an already half-dead man. But as he watched the sleeping prisoner, he saw a handwritten note on the table, which read that he would forfeit the bet. All these readings within these 15 years had enlightened him spiritually. He had experienced life in a more intense way. Through the books he had read, he had lived, loved, found miracles, preached, and now he despises freedom, life, health of this world. Everything was like a mirage, a wordless, fleeting illusion and deceptive. Because with the coming of death, we would be wiped out of this earth like we have never existed. According to the prisoner in his handwritten note, it, it read that people like the banker who loved their wealth and power are people who exchange heaven for earth. And to prove his word, he would get out of the room five hours before the fixed time and thus renounce the two millions. The banker had never felt so regretful in his entire life. He was overcome with so much emotions that his tears fell uncontrollably all night. While on one hand the banker was thinking about how not to lose his two millions and kill his prisoner, on the other hand the prisoner had renounced everything and gone into a spiritual lifestyle and he himself had renounced the two millions of the banker. He unknowingly was just about to commit murder, kill someone who was not even interested in his wealth. In the morning the watchman told him that the prisoner had escaped and he dutifully went to check the room himself, took the handwritten note on the table and locked it in his fireproof safe. Anton Chekhov was a great Russian short story writer and a playwright. His stories are a mixture of pathos and psychological insight. That means a mixture of the head and the heart. His themes often include desolation and gloom of the life in Russia. He deals with the loss of spirituality and character of people living in a disintegrated aristocratic society, people running after worldly interest in, instead of humanity and moral standards. The Bat also talks about man's gradual awareness and progressive understanding of life's realities and the foolish choices that turns a person's life around. That was a short discussion and summary of Anton Chekhov's The Bat. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.